garden miles to the sea to the free Okay, so this is Dr. Thornley. I'm a neurologist subspecializing in epilepsy. It is May 7, and today I'm going to talk about medical marijuana and its impact on schizophrenia and its impact on treatment of psychosis. So with schizophrenia, um, schizophrenia is a psychiatric disorder where um, some of the cardinal features include auditory hallucinations, there is social isolation, and there's a disorganized thought process. So there have been many reports previously verifying that those who have used um, marijuana are prone to developing schizophrenia. So I thought I would review the literature to understand exactly the mechanisms behind this. So I'm looking at some of the articles. There was one, there's, there's uh, quite a few scientific bases and scientific articles where um, with THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, which is uh, uh, one of the phytocannabinoids of the cannabis sativa plant, it has impact on serotonergic, dopaminergic, and glutamatergic pathways. So it's thought to um, reduce glutamatergic pathways, causes hypofunctioning, and this eventually is related to the pathway leading to schizophrenia. It is also thought to increase dopaminergic um, pathways so that there's hyperfunctioning of the dopamine uh, neurotransmitter pathways, which is also related to the uh, process of schizophrenia. And then it also impacts the serotonergic pathways. So in essence, it's thought that THC has some impact or plays a role in dysregulating these neurotransmitter pathways, which may give rise to schizophrenia. Now, in some of the speculations, there's been some, some mention in some articles saying that uh, marijuana causes schizophrenia. So this is not true because if you look at the population of those who abuse it, not every single person is going to develop schizophrenia. There's, there may be a correlation, but it hasn't been clearly defined what that correlation is. So I thought I would review the um, scientific basis to understand this so that, that way I can better advise my patients. So the um, tetrahydrocannabinol, path, uh, tetrahydrocannabinol, which is a substance found in the cannabis sativa plant, has impact on all those neurotransmitters, and um, that was reviewed by Gwen, Gwen Newig in 2018. Um, and then with glutamate, it's thought to dysregulate genes for synaptic function. And then the impact of tetrahydrocannabinol on dopaminergic pathways, which increases the functioning, was um, described by Fentagrassi in 2018. In addition, there was also a study by Murphy in 2017 when, uh, when THC was applied to the rat model, or I'm sorry, the mouse model, there was increased marble burying, burying activity. So marble burying is uh, a research concept that was um, that was observed, and it's thought to relate to obsessive compulsive type disorders as well as anxiety. So all these point towards um, impact of tetrahydrocannabinol uh, on uh, near, on psychiatric conditions, including schizophrenia, um, anxiety, and repetitive behaviors. And it's also thought to impact the serotonergic pathway as well. So all these pathways. Um, are involved with the uh, with uh, the pathophysiology of schizophrenia. Um, however, there is also a genetic and environmental component as well, because not everybody who is exposed to cannabis is going to develop schizophrenia. So there has to be a genetic predisposition, and there may be environmental factors as well. However, it I have seen some studies showing. The scientific basis on how tetrahydrocannabinol may um, may lead to an, a mechanism that 
um, can influence the, um, uh, the development of schizophrenia. Now with cannabidiol, uh, when cannabidiol is combined with tetrahydrocannabinol, this actually reduces these features because with the CB1 receptor, again, within our system, there's a CB1, CB2 receptor. CB1 is responsible for the psychoactive component of tetrahydrocannabinol, and cannabidiol um, binds to this, and it's thought to alleviate side effects of THC because the THC does not combine as much uh, to the CB1 receptor. So there's less paranoia, agitation, hyperactivity. Now with uh, cannabinoids, uh, it was found that the pharmacological profile is very similar to atypical antipsychotics. And so this is a very valid, um, a valid possible treatment in treating psychosis. So, um, and this was, um, this was described by Diana in 2013. Um, so these are just a few of the articles that I've read um, where um, tetrahydrocannabinol may have impact on the development of schizophrenia. However, there's also a genetic and environmental component as well. And then you really need an addition of cannabidiol to offset side effects of tetra tetrahydrocannabinol, and this will likely decrease the, the side effects including paranoia, agitation, hyperactivity, um, and, and in addition, the, ca the cannabidiol itself can also work as an antipsychotic because it's got uh, profile features similar to atypical antipsychotics. So the main thing is to understand the, the mechanism at the neurotransmitter basis in order to apply um, the use of medical marijuana in these, these types of patients with these types of disorders. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. And this is Dr. Thormy signing off. So uh, in summary, uh, there are reports previously that heavy abusers developed schizophrenia. However, uh, when you observe, not everybody exposed to this will develop schizophrenia. And then they, these papers show, papers show that THC does cause impact on the glutam glutamate dopamine and serotonin pathways within the system, which may be related to the development of schizophrenia. And then cannabidiol is necessary to be added to THC in order to alleviate these types of possible side effects. And cannabidiol uh, could be possibly used as an antipsychotic because it has a, a profile similar to um, atypical antipsychotic medications. Okay, I hope that was helpful. And this is Dr. Thormy signing off.